Hello lovelies, in this video the brilliant Miss B is going to be comparing sets of data. Now there are 15 examples in this video, work through slowly at three different levels and you can use the timestamps down below to jump in where you're feeling confident. If you find that video a little bit hard then you can go backwards and try the easier questions or if you're finding it easy you can go forward and try the harder questions. If you want more questions to revise at the end of this then there are loads available for you over on my website. We'll have a look at comparing data and box plots are a really good thing to compare data with. So you can clearly see with the box plot, you've got five different elements. You've got the minimum value, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the maximum possible value. So in question one, we've been asked to compare the minimum and maximum ages of group A and group B. So the first thing to do is to be really clear about what we're looking at. So we're looking at the minimum and maximum values. We're going to have the minimum values in blue and we can put the maximum values in green. And now the highlighted, we can compare them. So firstly, in blue, we can see that the minimum values are in different positions. And if you look at the numbers at the bottom, in group B, the minimum value is 20 years old. But in group A, the minimum value is 22 years old. So first, let's write a comparison for the minimum values. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. Let's just choose group A, alphabetical order. Let's compare group A to group B. So group A has higher, or we can write has A higher, minimum, than group B. Then we can write a comparison for the maximum values. Now they're both at exactly the same place, they're both at 58. So we can write the maximum values are the same. Now there's lots of different ways to write this. This is just one way. As long as you're getting this information across to the reader, then that should be fine. Moving on to question two, we've been asked for the compare the average resting heartbeat. And if we've been asked about averages and it's a box plot, we are talking about the median, the middle line. So looking at the two, because in group A it's around about 80, but in group B it's at 84. So group B as a higher average. So we can just write that down. Group B as a higher average. A few small words can say group B is an higher average than group A. You even say as a higher average resting heartbeat it is the data involved in the question and it might be a bit ambiguous to what exactly you mean. Moving on to question three, we are comparing the maximum and minimum values. So we can highlight the minimum values, highlight the maximum values. And coincidentally, this is the same answer as the first question. Group A has a higher minimum value but they both have the same maximum values. So let's look at a different way how you could write this. So in question one, we kind of compared it from the point of view of group A, but you can compare it from the point of view of group B. So we could write instead group B. Now group B doesn't have a higher minimum, it's got a lower minimum than group A. So if we switch the two groups around, we need to say lower rather than higher or vice versa. So group B has a lower. So it doesn't really matter which way around you write it. And then of course, at the end, the maximum is the same. Question four, we are comparing averages again. So highlight the average value, the median, the middle of the five lines. And it looks like in group A and group B, they are both at 40. So they both have the same. So we can say the average is the same. Now you could continue and say the average is the same in group A and group B. And it could be more specific and say the median is the same in group A and group B. Now moving on to question five. So again, we're going to be comparing medians, highlight the averages. And this time it seems that group A is a higher average. Uh, group A is at 84, but in group B it's at 80. So we can write group A has a higher average, or higher median to be more accurate. Now, with the easy questions, you're just being asked to kind of read values off. So any of the five, so we might be asked to read out the minimum value, the maximum value, the median, even the lower and upper quartiles, and compare those in the two groups. Now, with the medium questions, it could be a little bit more complicated. So the first thing to talk about is distribution. So by distribution of the heights in group A and group B, we'll kind of talk about the pattern of that middle box. Now, that middle box is separated into two halves. We have the positive half, which has the higher values in, which I'm shading in green. And we have the negative half, 
which has lower values. And together, they represent the middle 50% of people. So when I'm saying higher and lower, I'm only talking about the kind of higher and lower of the average kind of middle 50% of people. I'm not talking about two whiskers to either end, which has more data, more people involved who are at the extremes. So when we're saying compare distribution, what we are doing is comparing the balance between the positive and the negative half. So when we're looking at group A, we can see the green bit is bigger. So the positive bit is bigger. So we can say group A, because the positive half is larger, we can say group A has a positive. Um, I suppose we could say distribution here, but the usual word is say a positive skew. Now group B, and it's a negative half that's larger. So we'd have to say that group B has a negative skew. So by positive skew, what we're kind of saying is that there's more variation in the positive half. And a negative skew, we have more variation in the negative half. And particularly in group B, that kind of upper kind of 25% that I've called in green, there's actually a very narrow range those are all in. So it's negatively skewed because all the kind of positive side are all very similar, but on the negative side, they're more spread out. So there's more variation in those values. Now, for question two, the next thing to talk about is variation. And by variation, what we're talking about is how wide these boxes are. So we see that group B is much wider. That's got a wider variation. It's got more variation. Where group A is a much narrower box, so that's got much less variation. In group A, those middle 50% of people are all much, much closer together. So it's much more consistent. Whereas in group B, it's much more consistent. We're kind of looking at the size of the boxes. So what can we say? We can say that group A has less variation than group B. And the main bit of evidence for this, is rather than just looking at it, is the interquartile range. So the interquartile range is the upper quartile take away the lower quartile. And if you do that, you'll see that group A has a much lo lower number than group B does. So group A has less variation than group B. It has a lower interquartile range. So we're not just looking at it and guessing. We can actually use a bit of evidence to say I actually calculated it. And it's definitely got less variation. Does middle 50% less varied, the more consistent. It's a good thing, depending on the context, because it's got a lower interquartile range. Now, another thing you can look at is just the total range. So by the total range, we're just looking at how far apart the minimum and maximum values are. So what's the total range of value for the entire box plot? So I'm highlighting that for group B, and I'm highlighting it for group A. Now, when we look at the widths of those two bars I've just called in, we can probably see they have the same width. They've both got the same minimum value, and they've both got the same maximum value, so they have the same range. And even ones with different minimum and maximum values can still have the same range if we say, let's say group B had four higher for the minimum, but it also had four higher for the maximum, it would still have the same range. So compare the range of heights in group A and group B, they have the same range. Moving on to question four, and we're looking at distribution again, so we're looking at skew. So we'll color code this, we'll look at the positive side, we're going to look at the negative side and compare. Now group B is pretty even, but it looks like it's just about negatively skewed. You can see there's three boxes on the positive side and there's four on the negative side. Whereas group A, that's also negatively skewed, but there's a much much more negative skewed because a positive skew has a width of two, but the negative side has got a width of five. So what we can do, we can say that they are both negatively skewed. Both have a negative skew, but group A has the most negative skew. Now moving on to question five, it's looking at variation again. So we're looking at the interquartile range. We're looking at the relative widths of each box. Now it looks like in this question, the lower quartile of both and the upper quartile of both are in exactly the same position. So they both have the same variation. They have the same interquartile range. Again, just like the total range, they don't have to be in the same place the box is. It could be that group A had 10 less for the lower quartile, but it had 10 less for the upper quartile as well to belt it out. And it still had that same interquartile range. If you're not sure, you can look at the numbers and calculate it properly. But I'm going to say that they have the same variation, which means the same interquartile range. 
However, you'll see that group B is kind of dramatically skewed to the positive side, whereas group A has a kind of even skew. Now moving on to the hard questions. And this might be more like what an actual exam paper might be like, where they'll just give you the two block spots and they'll say, right, what do you think about this? And it's up to you to write multiple comparisons. And you can choose from all the ones we've used so far of which ones you'd like, you'd like to use. Sometimes a question might have additional uh, information. So one comparison might be more relevant than the others. But in general, you're going to get a choice. Now, the easiest thing to look at and one of the most relevant things to look at is the median. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the median of each group. So I've got question one's median, question two, question three, four, and five. And let's write the comparison for every single median. So in question one, A has a higher median. So group A has the highest average. In question two, uh, group A is the same. It's a little bit higher, but it's still higher than B. Now you can write this as a full sentence. I'm going to shorten it a little bit so I can fit all the answers on the screen at once. In question three, group B has got the highest median. See the blue line is more towards the right, towards the higher numbers. In question four, they're both at the same place. They're both at 40 years old. So they have the same average. And for the last question, again, group A has got the highest average. So we've done one comparison for each question. I'd always use the, the median because it's one of the most important things. The other question does ask you for something a bit more specific. So there'll be some kind of real life scenario. And so having a higher or lower median will be important. It's useful to be always looking at the median because that's one of the most common things you'd be asked for about specifically. Now, the next thing to look at is the skew. So I'm going to highlight the positive sides of each skew. Question one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to identify the negative pair of the skew. Question one, two, three, four and five. So looking at question one, the green pair of both is larger. So they both have a positive skew. And if you want to go into more detail, you can talk about how group B has got a larger skew than group A. Now looking at question two, now again, they're both just about positively skewed. Group A is pretty close, but you can see just, I think there's one more square in group A on the positive side. And for question three, it looks like it's the same again. So in question three, they both have, oh, they don't. Group B actually has an extra square in the negative section, making group B negatively skewed. So we're going to have to say that group A is positive. I'm going to say that group B is negative. And for question four, group B is negative, and group A doesn't have a skew. So we can write that group B's got that negative skew, and we're going to have to write that group A has got no skew. And then for the last question, group B is positively skewed and group A is negatively skewed. So now we need our third comparison. And the best thing probably to write for the third comparison is interquartile range. So we're just looking at the relative length of each pair in the middle, each box in the middle. Now we could work this out properly and find the lower quartile and find the upper quartile and take them away from each other. Again, accurate value for the interquartile range. And in some questions, it will ask you to do that. If it's just asking for a general comparison, though, one thing I'm going to do here is we'll just count the number of squares and just compare them that way. So, for example, in question one, we can see that the upper quartile of A and B is at the same place, but the lower quartile in B is just one square further to the left, it's one square lower. So, group B has got a higher interquartile range. So let me say with the median questions, it's got more variation around the mean. There's more variety in that middle 50% of values. Now for question two, again, they've both got the same upper quartile, but again in B, the lower quartile is lower. So that would mean that group B would have a higher interquartile range. Again, some questions are going to ask you for exactly what number that is. If you've got extra time in the exam, there's no harm working that out potentially for an extra mark. For question three, we can see that they've both got the same lower and upper quartiles, so they have the same interquartile range. For question four, now we can see that group A has an upper quartile one square further to the right, but its lower quartile is also one square further to the right. And again, you can work this out with the actual accurate numbers and get values, but they're going to have the same interquartile range. 
And then for the final question, we can see that group A has got a higher interquartile range. Group A has got five squares across and group B is only three squares across. And now we've got three comparisons for each one. Now, there are other things you could have written. You could have compared lower and upper quartiles, although you might as well just do interquartile range for those. And you could compare the minimum and maximum values. But again, with those, you might as well compare the actual total range because that will include the minimum and maximum values as well. So you could have written about the total range as well. Now, practical reasons why you might need to analyse this data. So the data in front of us has got things like age, height, resting heartbeat, weight. So it might be two different groups in a medical trial using different kind of drugs and we see the effect of two different treatments for an illness. And then we can use this to figure out which one's the best. Another use might be players in sporting events. So if you've got a choice of two different people to add to a football team, then over a whole season, you might want to have somebody with a highest, higher average because they're going to be pretty consistent every game for you. And maybe somebody with a lower interquartile range that's actually relatively high up in terms of the numbers that you're looking at, the number of goals. So you're looking for consistency, higher average, lower interquartile range. If you're looking for a player who's not going to play with you every single match, maybe they could come on as a substitute in the last 10 minutes and they're going to score a goal. Then maybe you don't want someone who's consistent, you want somebody with a highest, higher maximum. So perhaps a player who's got a really large positive skew or a large range with the higher values being higher than other players, but maybe they're not as consistent, so you don't want to play in every game, but they can reach those really, really high scores some of the time. So you'd rather have them on your team for kind of a last minute substitution. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.